In the city of Vegas, on a fateful night, a man who can see into the future, Chris Johnson, goes to a comedy program to do magic. Naturally, he poses as a magician and tries to conceal his ability to see the future. At the show's beginning, he is introduced as Frank Cadillac, the man who can see what you will do before you do it. Although it seems like a normal show to him, but he doesn't know there are NSI agents in the showroom with information about his ability, and they are hoping to confirm if his ability is real. He starts his show by asking a man where he is from that's after saying that he is from Seoul. His prediction turns out to be correct, and he also predicts that his wife's jewelry will fall into her cup, and it happens just as he has predicted. Upon leaving the club, he speaks about himself. Johnson says he doesn't know what people think about magicians, but he knows that under that joke, that game, and those shows, some of the acts are real, and some of them can see the future, like him. However, Johnson sees just about two minutes ahead, and he can only see things about himself, except in a situation where he sees a lady entering into the diner at a time later than two minutes. On days when shows don't pay well, Johnson spends his time in the gambling room to ensure he doesn't get noticed for his ability, he refuses to gamble huge, and he only pays with little money and only against the company and not against a person. He sits on the gambling chair to start his game, and he predicts every move. While in the CCTV room, the casino store owner, Roybal, figures Johnson, which he knows is Frank, actually has extraordinary abilities, although this brings another question of why Frank doesn't gamble more if he indeed has a system. Roybal calls the securities to go to Frank's table, and just as he is about to make that call, Frank directly looks into the CCTV, making it obvious that he knows what they are talking about. He instantly stands up from that table to confuse the security, and he goes to the bar to get his winnings. He says that the issue with changing the future is that it changes into another thing. As a result of his change in direction, he sees that a man enters the casino and attempts to steal with a gun, and the security sent to him bring out the gun prompting the thief to shoot two people. So when he sees the thief beside him, he immediately holds him and takes away the gun before the securities arrive. They see the gun on him and assume he is the owner. Roybal orders them to chase him, and as they chase him, he keeps running. Roybal keeps directing the guards with the CCTV, but he predicts all of their moves, and he avoids them smoothly. He enters the bathroom because he knows a man with a cap will enter soon. He takes the man's cap and finds his way outside the casino, then steals a car. Roybal informs Vetus Pete about the stolen car, and they chase him, but he avoids them by driving ahead of them to cross the train station while they have to wait for the train to pass. He drives to a garage, where he packs his stolen car. Meanwhile, at the NSA, Special Agent Callie Ferris tries to convince her boss that Johnson has special abilities. Her boss informs her that a Russian 10 kiloton nuclear munition has been stolen since about three months ago, and it has been stationed in their county, so he needs everyone on the street instead of chasing an imaginary magician. She reassures him she is sure of Johnson's ability, and with Johnson, they will get what they want faster than using the street. He eventually gives her five days to get the munition. She looks at the CCTV recording of Johnson's operation at the casino and asks that Roy Bull should be brought to her. Royal confirms why Johnson left his seat, and fortunately for her, there is a low jack on the car Johnson had stolen, and she gets his location. At the garage, Johnson plays a game with a man, and he informs him that the only lady he has ever seen her future will be coming to a diner by 8-9 p.m. That's the first time he has seen farther than two minutes, so probably she is the one for him. He realizes Ferris is coming, and instead of running, he decides to wait to talk to her and see how much she knows about him. When Ferris enters, she tells him she is sure he knows why she is there, but he pretends to be ignorant, telling her everything she watched on his show is just a show, and it isn't real. She tells him about the nuclear weapon in the US at the moment, but he claims he can't see the future. She therefore says he is standing behind a stolen car, and he was also caught with a gun at a casino so she can arrest him, but in defense, he tells her he only wanted to stop the thief. She was how he knew the man would kill two people. He realizes he has been caught. However, he insists he isn't interested in saving the world, and the last set of people who said they would help him since the age of three have always taken him through several mental tortures. At that moment, he sees that some cops are coming, and he decides to escape before they arrive. He escapes. Meanwhile, that night, Roybal is confronted by some men who shoot his leg and kidnap him. The following day, Johnson goes to the diner to wait for the lady who is to enter by 8-9. At precisely that time, a young lady enters and Johnson uses his ability to check for the best way to get closer to the lady. When her violent ex-boyfriend, Kendall, arrives, he tries to get her into talking to him and squeezes her hand. She tells him he is hurting her and before he is further hurt, Johnson goes to fight him, he gets injured in the process and the girl, Liz feels guilted into taking care of him. 
He finds out she is going towards Flagstaff, and he deceives her that he is going towards the same place, so she drives with him. Upon arriving at Flagstaff, she takes him around and shows him her school students. He does magic for them. Ferris finds out Roybal is dead. She figures the killer may be looking for information about Johnson too, and the terrorists are at their hideout too bothered about Johnson. While some of them think it's not their responsibility to find a magician, their boss, Jones, informs them they must find Johnson before he spoils their plans. That night, there is a casualty on the way, prompting Johnson and Liz to spend the night at a motel, although Johnson sleeps in the car. The following day, he appreciates her beauty and they kiss. They end that morning with intercourse. On the other hand, the NSI has found the bomb's location and Ferris uses that opportunity to convince her team to bring Johnson in. She travels to Flagstaff along with her team to find Johnson. On the way, she also finds out another lady, Betty, who lives at an apartment adjacent to hers, has been killed and her throat is cut off like Roybal's own with no evidence. Upon arriving at the motel, Johnson is they wait for Liz to come out and Ferris goes to confront her. Ferris takes Liz to her car and she shows Liz the video of Johnson attacking a random man at a casino and tells her she is going out with the sociopath and she can help them by bringing him to them. She tells her to drug Johnson's drink and in a few minutes they will come for his body. She hesitates to do it but Ferris reminds her she is working for a governmental organization and they are the same. Eventually, she agrees. While the teen waits outside, Liz goes inside and drugs Johnson. Before Johnson drinks the drink, he goes to hug her, and she feels guilty conscience, prompting her to tell him the truth. He purposely increases the volume of the television, and he shows her his ability. He tells her he sees what will happen in about two minutes except for her. She was the only one he saw from a long period of time. He plans to escape, and he tells her to stay in. Ferris also notices something is wrong. Johnson comes out and jumps into the mountains. Ferris and the teen follow him, and due to his ability, he escapes from them. Ferris eventually sees him, and when he is about to escape, he sees that a car will fall on Ferris, so he goes to save her. After rescuing her, he is arrested. After his arrest, the terrorists also kidnap Liz. Ferris ties him to the chair. She opens his eyes wide and makes him watch the news. Instead of seeing the bomb, he sees that Liz will be killed on a rooftop later that day. He tells Ferris that he didn't see anything about the bomb and begs her to release him. She refuses and puts him in prison, but he hits the officers and escapes. He runs to the rooftop and looks at where Liz will be killed. Ferris meets him there, he explains what he has seen to her, and she tells him Liz hasn't been killed, but the terrorists are trying to lure him to the room so they will kill him, so he should work with her they can get their common enemy. She tells him he will walk into the bait. Ferris calls her team, and they plan to attack based on Johnson's prediction of how the kidnappers have tied Liz with bombs. They enter the place together, and with his ability he gets the police to the terrorist leader immediately, and the man is holding Liz at ransom. He splits himself and makes the leader shoots randomly until Ferris shoots at him. He hugs Liz and tells her all is well, and they go to check the bomb. He realizes that he has made a mistake and the bomb is actually in that place. The bomb explodes and they die. He wakes on the bed with Liz before Ferris meets Liz. It turns out that he is able to see all he has seen because Liz is involved. So in order not to get Liz involved, he calls Ferris and offers to take her to where the bond is on the condition that she won't bring Liz into it. He sits waiting for Ferris and says, the future changes whenever a person look at it. Ferris arrives, and he enters the car to take her to where the bond is. 